Hey folks, it's Henry Steele again. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about The Gap. And we all know what The Gap is, right? This is Apple. Remember a couple days ago I talked about the price projection I was looking at for Apple. Well, there are certain stocks that are known, like IBM here, for having quite a few gaps for various different reasons. And the basic idea is that eventually The Gap gets covered and that just means that whatever price area the market gapped through or passed will eventually be covered by price action again. But the thing is that can take days, weeks, months, sometimes even years. And that's not actually what I want to talk about in this video. What I want to talk about is if we go back to Apple right here, remember how I showed you the price projections, how I did that and why I'm looking at the price area that I'm looking at for Apple and I used measurements essentially just the 100% uh, price extension well on stocks like IBM where you have big gaps what you're gonna find is that you can use the gaps also to um, their essentially pivot points or measuring points for these uh, price projections. So if we look from right here, we see that there was a big gap right here at the big low. In fact, let's address that really quickly. Here is the same low that we saw in Apple. Remember we had the low at the very beginning of January and then the market moved up. Well, that means Apple was continuing to move down when IBM, which is kind of in the same genre. IBM is a bit different than Apple because Apple is more communication and computers. And IBM is kind of spread all over the place, but still basically the same sector. And we see that IBM made the low a uh, week or two before Apple did. So it was actually leading the market, the move up IBM was. And usually when you have something that's in the same segment or, or basically the same segment or not segment, but uh, I just said it. sector. Sorry about that. When you have leaders, the leaders are going to be the first to bottom and they're going to be the first to top. And we see that with uh, IBM here. We see that the market moved up, made a big correction here from April to the end of May and then continued up. Apple, we see that there was a correction also but then it continued up and it's been continuing up very strongly so even though uh, it continued down in time past what IBM did it's continuing up in time past what IBM does also so not that that's news to anybody but just in case you didn't realize that leaders tend to lead both up and then down so anyway we have uh, lower prices now while Apple is still making higher highs. But we want to look at the same time frame right here, the low, and draw a 100% price extension from here. So we go from here, there's our top that we're going to use from, from the gap, and that gives us the price extension right here, this 100%. And we see that the market moved up to that right there, and then consolidated down significantly when measured precisely, we see that we had very close to a 50% retracement. It was 45, 46%, something like that. So that was a very good um, price projection point. Now, obviously, this isn't time, but this is price telling us that when the market finally closed above this 100% price extension, we had a significant retracement right there. Now, that means that this price area right here is important but obviously we can see it without even having to push the extension all the way up there that price is nowhere near that 100% extension from right here but if we move this up to the top of the gap right there that would actually give us another level that we could use and we see that the market when it rebounded from this retracement right here almost made it up there but didn't quite so that shows a significant amount of weakness right there it doesn't mean that we still can't get up there and if the market does charge up for some reason then this would be the exact price level 155 points or dollars would be exactly where i'm looking for a significant retracement 
or perhaps another gap since uh, IBM tends to like their gaps right there all over the place actually so another example of that let's look at where did I put it uh, Shake Shack is another stock here that had a low that happened right around the same time and like IBM it had the December low instead of the early January low so it was leading at least in relationship to the Amazon and it, we had a big top in August September right there early September rather and late September we had a double top there and then it's just been charging down ever since so if we make our price project projections rather to the downside for this, let's look at that. Here's our big top. There's our first significant bottom. We get the 100% price projection to the downside right here. We see that there was a bit of a consolidation there and then it just gapped down. So our next price projection comes right here. This is what's significant because it was, um, it showed this Man, I'm having troubles today. Sorry. This price projection right here was validated by the fact that we had a nice consolidation right there before we just went straight down. So we use this as our next extension point right there. And we see that we're very close to the price level where we're at right here. So I would expect that the market, when it hits that 55 uh, 87 so when it closes below here or at least touches around this price level that we could see a retracement to the upside for a bit there so that's the next projection right there but one thing we'll notice here is that if we use one of these like this guy right here this small insignificant low right there we see that we're pretty much right in the middle of the gap for our 100 um, percent projection and if we go right there at this rather insignificant low, looks a little more significant than right here, we see that we're touching right there where the price went to. So that's something to keep in mind. But our, there we go, our price projection right here is what I'm currently keeping my eyes on for this particular stock due to the 100% price projection from right here. So I don't necessarily think it's going to be a huge retracement. It could be. Um, the next projection I would make, I would not use the low that comes from here. I would actually use the other part of the gap, and that would be my next price projection if we continue down or several months from now we have price action after a retracement to the upside where we move down. So anyway, that's pretty much the crux of this video. I wanted to show you how I look at the price projections with gaps because that can get a little bit confusing if you're not, um, you know, if you're not doing it regularly, looking at gaps. And a lot of times people just look at gaps and say, oh, well, I'm expecting the market to eventually cover that gap. Well, this is how I use it for the price projections. I'll use the start point of the gap and the end point of the gap just like I was showing there and let's look at Tesla right here one last gap example here Tesla is kind of renowned for making gaps it usually covers the gap fairly quickly but not always we have a gap that wasn't covered until months and months and months later here and anyway so we have a bottom right here let's make our we have a, a first relatively significant top right there so we'd make a hundred percent price projection right there and look what happens the market um, gaps right to that point now that's usually an indication that the market's going to continue to go further so instead of getting a retracement like we would expect at the 100 percent price uh, expansion we because it's a gap and it landed right there we would expect it to continue in the direction that it was going so at this point I would not be looking at it and say oh I'm expecting a retracement it would be the exact opposite it would be I expect it to continue to run at least the distance of the gap okay and then we have a significant top right there that we gapped down from come on and we see that the market has made a top right there and this particular top is not in relation to this top what we would do 
we look here, this would become relevant to that, and then we would make our 100% price projection from the top of the gap right there. And we'd see that we have quite a ways to go. That doesn't mean I'm expecting it to move up there, but that this price projection right here that was based on this top becomes a price projection from this because of the gap right here, and that's this projection right here. But this top right here, using a price projection, we're at that right now. So if the market continued up, we'd have a rather significant price projection using this top to the upside there. But if you'll notice that this one is fairly close to the gap right there, and that the gap bottom of the gap right here, which is actually, uh, it's hard to tell which part of that spinning top is the open or close, but you can see that the market, when it gapped up and finally came to a stop and then did retrace a bit, it was at the 100% price projection from the starting point of the gap from this low. So I hope that makes sense. I hope I didn't confuse you too much. Uh, if you have any questions, just stick them in the comments down below, and I'll either answer those. If I get a whole bunch of people confused, I'll just do another video about it. But until next time, this is Henry Steele, hoping this video helped you some way.